to be faithful and diligent in whatever is in front of you right now. Whatever you're doing, you're supposed to be doing it better than anyone in the world. You're supposed to be doing it the best of your ability. You're supposed to be giving everything you have. To see the waters part, they had to be willing to drown. Then you have to decide to be the person. You understand your intention, you know your purpose. You're not just here to exist. You're not just here to survive. You're not here to find a safe, comfortable, easy, predictable life. You do not know the failures I have made in my life and then watch God take the rubble of my failures to do something so extraordinary that it looks like I had it planned the whole time. If you wanna be ready for that moment where God wants to throw you in the game, that moment where God needs you to step up, that moment where you need to elevate what everyone else is living in and walking and believing in, you need to begin to know your stuff now. But you don't know the stuff you need to know, so let me tell you the stuff you need to know. You need to be faithful and diligent and excellent in whatever is in front of you right now. I didn't even know who Jesus was when I was studying philosophy in college. I didn't know who Jesus was when I went to University of North Carolina. Then I just came to Jesus and didn't know what my life would be about. And I could look back on my life and think to myself, if God had just told me ahead of time, I could have been better prepared. But the reality is, some of you are not prepared for the moment you're in right now because you took too passively the challenges and opportunities you had in your past whatever you're doing right now I don't know if you're a student I don't know where you work I don't know what kind of career you have I don't know what kind of ambitions you have but this is what I do know whatever you're doing you're supposed to be doing it better than anyone in the world you're supposed to be doing at the best of your ability you're supposed to be giving everything you have if you're a follower of Jesus you need to be a person who says I'm going to set the standard of what it means to be the best of the best of the best in whatever I do See, God never wastes what you're learning. And so whatever you're learning, whatever you're, you're, whatever's in front of you right now, don't use Jesus as an excuse to be average. Then you have to decide to be the person who knows who you are. You understand your intention. You know your purpose. You're not just here to exist. You're not just here to survive. You're not here to find a safe, comfortable, easy, predictable life. You're here to live the life that only you and Jesus could live together. And what they're saying is that we're going into the fire because we know that's where God is calling us and he will meet us there. And he might meet us there when we get consumed or he might meet us there as we walk back out. But there's no question we're going in this direction because you're always going in the direction of God. Yeah. And when we bought this property, it was so inexpensive. It was unbelievably inexpensive. It, it, it was strange that for the hundred years or so that Dallas has been developed, this property was just sitting there. And, and then a year later, when we put our resources together and we were ready to build our building, we, we did a core sample. It went at least 25 feet deep. And we found that it was a landfill. And there was no good soil to be found. And we did a second core sample. And it was a landfill there too. And there was no soil. And I remember getting called in by the organization that um, financed the property. I'd never heard a Christian cuss before. And I sat down with this man, and it wasn't like massive profanity, but he just said, son, do you know that piece of crap you talked me into buying? And I said, yes, sir. And then he went on to say some other things. And uh, <laughs> he made it very clear to me that I'd wasted God's money. And I just caused them to waste all their money. I remember I would just go out to that landfill day after day after day and I would walk in that property and I took these words from Joshua where it says, everywhere the sole of your foot touches will be yours. And I just said, God, I know that's not exactly what this verse means, but it needs to be exactly what this verse means right now. And I, I can tell you, this is not metaphorical. This is literal. I walked that property over and over and over and over, day after day and week after week and month after month. And I said, God, everywhere I set the sole of my feet, it is mine. And I claim this land. I'm just going to claim and I'm going to ask you, God, to, to turn it into soil. I'm just going to ask you, God, to somehow make it possible to build a building here. Because I couldn't pray, God, let us cheat someone else and sell it. And so I was like, God, you have to do something. I went back to that man who was in charge of that property and I said, Oh, there was a day I was actually out there praying for that property. And I went back to our little tiny duplex where we were having our services. 
with a space heater with my polyester suits. And I, I remember this woman stood up who, you ever know someone who just like, they believe in Jesus, they believe in God, but they don't really have like, like crazy faith. They have like really rational faith. And these, we became famous as the church on the dump. And uh, you know, the, we were, I was the guy that bought the landfill. I became really famous for that. And this whole group came from out of the city and they came to do like this little missionary work. And without meaning any harm, the guy said, hey, what are you gonna do with that landfill? Which I kept getting asked every time I saw someone. It just cut into my soul. And I remember this woman said, oh, we've already asked God to turn it into soil. It'll be fine. I think she said that because she was just so tired of everybody trampling over my failure. But when she said that, something awakened inside of me went, I think she believes. I mean, I know I believe, but I think I've lost my mind. But, but she believes, and I think she's still sort of like rooted in reality. And, and so I went back to the organization and I said, could you take one last core sample? And I remember where I stood all the time and prayed. I said, could you take it right here on the property? And the guy said, son, do you know how much a core sample costs? About $3,000, by the way. And, uh, and I said, no, sir, but you've already wasted a lot of money anyway. And why not one more? And just out of sheer frustration, he took a third core sample. And I stand before you today telling you when that third core sample was taken, that property came out soil. And to this day, there's a church building on that property on Grand and Irve. And the reason I'm telling you this, because there's, there's a lot of you who are new here and you don't know where Kim and I have come from. See, you do not know the challenges we have faced and the miracles we have seen. You don't know what has shaped us and shaken us and torn us to shreds. You do not know the failures I have made in my life and then watch God take the rubble of my failures to do something so extraordinary that it looks like I had it planned the whole time. I just think most of us are too afraid to fail to give God the material to do his great work. To see the waters part, they had to be willing to drown. But God is amazing enough that even when we get it wrong, he gets it right.